Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that Jesus Christ is our Savior is a very different thing than believing that Jesus Christ is our Savior. Faith starts with knowledge, yes, but then it transforms into something much, much bigger than simply knowing. Faith is about knowing something with such a deep conviction that we're actually willing to change our lives and this world for it. As Jesus says, you can know something, but never actually receive it in your heart. That's the difference between simple knowledge and faith. When we believe, when we believe in something, we actually act different. When we believe in something, it actually transforms who we are on the inside significantly. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday here in the church, also known as Heretic Sunday. Because today is the day that preachers all too easily and all too often try to explain the Holy Trinity in a way that's just going to make sense to the parishioners. Not admitting fully, 100% that the Holy Trinity truly is something much, much bigger than any of us can grasp. We've probably all heard, some of us have maybe even used the example in trying to explain the Trinity, as in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are like ice and rain and mist. All the same thing, but different. Or the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and the Creator, the Father, are like a mom and a teacher and an aunt. Again, all the same person, but different. Those analogies, well, they're spoken with good intention to help us to understand and think differently. They are all a form of heresy called modalism. Heresy is false teaching, if you don't know it. It means it's not what the church has ever taught. Wanting to explain something beyond knowing, we often get it wrong, because it's easy to get wrong. Some things are just bigger than what we can comprehend. And those uncomfortable with mystery who want to define God, they're okay trying to trap God into a box, as long as it means that I get to understand it. But the thing is, God is not fully understandable through the limited human mind, proving in many ways that God truly is greater and bigger than what God created. The good news, though, The good news is that we are not saved by what we think. We are saved by faith alone. What we think, what we think about God, what we think about the world, what we even think about Jesus Christ does not save us. Jesus' actions on the cross saved us. That's what matters. The idea that we had better get it right if we want to be saved is all about our action. And the fact of the matter is, we all get these things wrong all the time. And so what then can we have faith in? What can we truly have faith in about God? Well, I'm perfectly convinced of this. And I hope that you will be too. We can be convinced. We can have complete faith that God is love and that God loves us. That's what really matters. It's not what we just think. And this is not what I just think that God loves us. No, I truly believe it in my heart for each and every one of us, all of God's creation. And I hope that you do too. Yes, on Holy Trinity Sunday, I don't think it would be fair not to address the idea that three can't be one and one can't be three. That that logic 
is impossible in this world that God created. Three is not one, and one is not three. And I know how easy it is to get stuck in this teaching and to say, if that's what it is, then I can't trust that. But the thing is, I think it helps us to truly understand that God is bigger than what we can think. That God's love for us will not be hindered by simple logic. Think of it this way. The Trinity is God's love breaking the rules for us. Each person of the Holy Trinity is just yet another way that God reaches out to us to express the love that we so desperately need in this world. The Father, the Creator, who brings all of this into being, we learn, seems to want more and more and more things to love. God didn't stop creating after day six and just take a break for the rest of eternity. No, God continues to create and to bring new life and new relationships into this world. It's almost like God just is never satisfied with that's enough things to love. Seems like there's an infinite, an absolute infinite amount of love for God to share. Another way that God shows God's love to us is through the Son, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who comes and shows us this perfect unconditional love that has come to the rescue in the midst of our pain and suffering and our hurting in this world. That God doesn't just create us. That after God creates us, God's not done with us. God continues to reach into our lives and to bring healing and hope and salvation where we mess it up. Jesus' miracles, every single one of them, seem to be, to me at least, time after time after time, God yet again breaking the laws of the world, the laws of the universe, to show us how much we are truly loved. And if that isn't enough love, the person of the Holy Spirit or the Advocate is there with us to wrap God's arms around us like a warm blanket on a cold night to remind us that we are going to be loved in every moment of every day. That there is no place that we can go where we will ever be able to escape that love of God. I'm sure enough on this to be the hill that I die on. God loves us. For those of us who live in our heads all the time, we need to remember to live in our hearts sometimes, too. There's much more space in our hearts than there is in our heads. That is actually where God takes up residency in the world, right in here, in each and every one of us. Go ahead. Test the limits of your thoughts. Test the limits of your brain. Try to memorize as much as you can. I promise you that you will quickly find out that there is a limited amount of space in each one of our heads. But then also go and test the space in your heart. Test the capacity for you to love others. I think that you will always, and I mean always for infinity, find more room in your heart to love others. And that is because we are created in the image of God. We have the capacity to love as much as God loves. That insecurity that each one of us has about being loved by God, let it go. God's love for you is special. You can't mess it up. As a matter of fact, it's the only relationship on the face of this earth that you can't mess up. 
God's love for you is going to be there, no matter what. It isn't, it won't be, and it has never been about what we think. It's about what we believe. On Judgment Day, I can't imagine God standing there and telling us to recite a creed or to list off the Ten Commandments. It's not about what we think. It's not about what we know. It's about what we believe. What we're willing to enact in our lives about the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so I think that those questions that we're going to be asked instead of the technical stuff is where did you feel my love? And where did you share it in this world? God's going to ask all of us, I think, how did you let my love flow through you out into this world? Amen.